All right, so this is where we left off on Friday. Okay, we were talking about the different fields of view, the different microscope lenses that we were going to be using and looking through tomorrow when we do our lab. So I had to draw this picture here, and I was just going to get to kind of what it meant and how we're going to use it. All right, so the first lens that you're going to look through is the scanning power lens. It's the short little red one. Okay, it's got a red stripe on it. It gives you the largest field of view or area that you can see because it has the lowest magnification. Okay, the more you magnify, the smaller the area you're going to be looking at. Okay, and you can see that as we progress from 40x to 100x, okay, the size of our field of view shrinks. And then when we go to high power, it shrinks even more. Okay, and it shrinks like linearly as well. Okay, I went from, if I go from 100x to 400x, my area decreases by a factor of four. Okay, I'm magnifying it, so I see four times less at four times the magnification I was looking at it previously. Okay, so the reason we need to know these fields of view is to help us estimate the size of the objects we're looking at. All right, because that's one of the things that's gonna end up on your lab diagrams. And we're gonna to talk today also about how we do a proper lab diagram. So let's say I'm looking at something on the scanning power lens and it's that big. About how big is that? Yeah, 2,000, maybe, maybe somewhere I would say between 1,800 and 2,200 micrometers, right? 2,000 is kind of right in the middle there. So we would estimate that the size of this is 2,000 micrometers, All right? There on follow there. And not a really hard thing. It is just an estimation. I'm not looking for you to give me numbers and decimals or anything like that. Just an estimate based on how much of the field of view did it take up. Mu, yes. Uh, if you go to insert symbol, it's in the symbols, yeah. yeah. Uh, and I think in the categories, it's in the Greek, because it's Greek. Okay. All right. Um, so that's how we estimate our field, or sorry, the size of our objects. Now, a couple of things on estimating the size. You always use the longest dimension of the object. Okay. So even if this thing was oriented like that, Okay, I would still estimate it along its longest dimension. All right, I wouldn't change now and go, oh, well, this is only uh, 800 micrometers now because it's turned. It didn't change how, how big it was. It just changed its orientation. So always estimate along its longest dimension. Everyone follow there? Okay, you might want to make a little note of that somewhere. Okay, when you're estimating the size of an object, estimate along the longest dimension. If the thing is fairly uniform in all directions, then just pick one. Okay, everybody all right with that? Okay, like I said, that's where we left off the other day. Okay, so there's our fields of view. They are on your, they are in your notes package, but the diagram kind of makes them mean a little bit more because you can kind of see it. Okay, and when we're estimating the size of the object, we can estimate how many objects would fit across about two in the case we just did, okay? And then divide the field of view by that number. 4,000 divided by two is 2,000, right? Or you can just go with about half, 2,000, and, and be done with it, okay? Whichever way, remember it is just an estimate. Okay, questions on that? Right. Okay, I want you guys to uh, try those questions. We're gonna go over them here in just a second, okay? So I want you guys to write down what you think the answers are in your notes somewhere, okay, and then we'll go over them together, and then I'm going to walk you through how to do the uh, lab drawings. Okay, next thing we got to talk about are lab drawings, okay? Lab drawings come in a certain format, okay? And I wish someone had told me this before I went to university and got like zeros on my first few labs because I didn't know how to draw one. So I'm going to try and save you guys the agony here of what I had to go through, okay? and tell you how it is you make a proper lab drawing. Of course, now it's probably all digital, which is why I'm also gonna show you how digitally it's supposed to look, okay? But at least you'll know the format, okay? In a proper lab drawing, the title does not go at the top. Weird, I know, that's the thing that threw me for the longest time. I kept putting the title at the top because your whole life, what do you always put at the top? The title, okay? The title goes at the bottom on a lab drawing. I know, I thought it was dumb too. Probably still is dumb, but whatever. Okay, the title goes at the bottom. All that goes up on the top is your name and the date. 
Okay, so, uh, and that goes in the top right hand corner, right? Right where you see this, top right hand corner of the lab drawing. Your, your drawing itself or diagram or picture as we're gonna use needs to take up like basically as much of the page as you can make it take up while still leaving room for the title and the labels, right? So make it as big as you possibly can. All right, so that's what we can see here. This is the top of the page. We can see down here is the bottom of the page. So it's big, okay? I made it take up as much room as I could, but I still left room for all my labels. Now, what do you notice about my labels? Okay, they are not capitalized. Not something I'm terribly worried about, but they, none of these are capitalized. What else? What do you notice? Where do they all go? Right, they all go to one side. I don't care what side that is. It's usually the right-hand side, but there's nothing hard and fast about that rule, okay? Um, but they all need to go to the same side. Otherwise, the diagram starts to look really disorganized and cluttered because you got labels everywhere and it's hard for people to find them. So they should all go to one side and they should all be a horizontal line. right through it yep i know it seems counter counterproductive or counterintuitive but yes that's what you have to do now something else that often comes up is what if i have two structures that are like right beside each other and the lines would overlap or i wouldn't have room to draw the the labels well in a case like that okay you do this so let's say i needed to label something that's right over here by where the uterus line is okay i would go diagonally up and then over making enough room for that label, all right? So you can go diagonally up or down a short way just to get out of the way, but everything needs to end on a horizontal line. All right, okay. Below the drawing or diagram or picture, picture is what we're gonna be using, okay, is the title. So what I've titled this is Cestoda. This is from Phylum Cestoda, which is the flatworms, okay? And this is just a small flatworm, all right? So I've just labeled it or titled it that, and then I've also titled it what magnif or sorry, I have titled it, but I've put what magnification I viewed it under. All right, so when I did this one, I was actually using a different microscope. Your lowest power, the scanning power is 40X. So 40X magnification, and I also put its approximate size, 1.5 centimeters. Okay, so those are the three things that go below, the title, the magnification, and the size. Okay. Your sizes will all be in micrometers because everything we're looking at is quite small. And then your name and the date go in the top right-hand corner. All right, questions on how that lab drawing works. That's really all you need to remember, okay? Labels to one side, name and date top right, title, magnification, size below. No, you're going to take the pictures, okay? So when we're looking through the microscopes tomorrow, you're gonna to use your phone to take pictures through the microscope, just as I did on Friday, okay? It's not that hard, okay? I took actually video of myself doing the exact same lab that you guys are gonna to do tomorrow, and I got all of the pictures and all the video in 4K, right? Like it's super clear if you watch the video, but you're not gonna to need to watch much of the video because you're gonna have great pictures of your own, okay? Um, just looking through there. Now, yeah, you gotta fiddle a little bit to get the camera lens so that the light's coming through and whatever, but you just kind of hold it there and you know, touch the screen to get it focused, whatever, you'll get it, okay? It's not that tough. The, the toughest part is actually getting the specimen in focus on the microscope. Taking the picture is easy. You guys all know how to take pictures with your cell phones, okay? So that part will be common sense, commonplace for you guys. All right, so um, no, you don't have to draw it, nor do I want you to draw it, because if you draw it by hand, then you're taking a picture of it and inserting it into your lab report electronically afterwards. Seems like extra work, right? We're gonna kind of skip the middleman here and just do it all digitally, because I'm sure that's the way they're doing it now anyway. Okay? Digital cameras weren't around when I was in university. Oh, crap, I'm old. Um, yeah. They weren't around when I was in university. My cell phone was a brick that I carried around. It wasn't really a brick, but it was heavy like a brick and it was big. Yeah. All right, um, so I'm gonna show you how to do the, the lab drawings here using Google Drawings. Okay, you're gonna go from Google Drawings and then you're gonna insert that into, uh, into your Google Doc. So the first thing you're gonna have is a picture on your cell phone. You're gonna need that to be on your school Google Drive. Okay, so what you're gonna have to do 
is go into your pictures on your phone, okay, and send the pictures from your camera roll or photo stream or whatever to your Google Drive, to your school Google Drive. The easiest way to do that is actually just to use the Google Photos uh, app within Google Drive, okay? And it'll just pull all of the pictures off. But if you don't want all of the pictures on your Google Drive, you can just select one at a time. So in your camera roll, you just select and then hit uh, the little square with the arrow, the sending button, okay? And one of the options there should be Google Drive. Send it to your drive, put it in the right folder so you can find it, and then you're going to uh, put it into a Google Drawing. All right, to use Google Drawings, Okay. So what you're going to have okay, is, so you're going to go into Google Drawings, and you can just search for that on, on the Chromebooks tomorrow or whatever, just search Google Drawings okay, and click on it and this will open up. All right. So in Google Drawings is where we're going to put the picture as well as the labels okay, and everything. And then we'll just insert it into our Google Doc as one big picture. Okay. So the first thing you need to do is go to insert. Okay. When you click on insert, you're going to click on image, and then you're going to select an image from your drive to put in there. All right. Um, I had a picture of an amoeba in here somewhere. There we go. Okay, so here's my picture of an amoeba. So I'm just going to click on that. It's going to upload it, and boom, there it is. Okay, so now I've got the picture that I took. This isn't actually the picture that I took, but this is a picture of an amoeba, okay, that I'm going to use now to do my lab drawing. Now, right now, you know, it's got kind of strange dimensions, and, and that's fine. It really doesn't matter because we're going to be inserting it as one picture, okay? But I want it to nicely fit on a single page. Okay, when I'm using this. So I'm just going to rotate it so that it's more like that. Okay, and then I'm just going to move it like so. Right, because really an amoeba has, it's just a blob. Right, the shape is just kind of whatever. Everyone's is going to look a little bit different. Okay, so now that I've got it set up like that, it's going to be a little bit easier for me to put the labels on. Right? The labels, like we said, had to be straight lines. Well, luckily for us, there's a line tool right beside the arrow here. Okay? So I just click on the arrow tool, and I start labeling structures. All right, so I put a line out there. And I'm going to put a line out here and make them as close to horizontal as I can. All right. I think that one's not quite horizontal, but oh, that's definitely not horizontal. That's a little better. Okay, so I've got my horizontal lines now out to the side. Now I need to type the labels on there. So to do that, you're going to click up here on text box. Okay, so if you click on that, it'll allow you to draw a text box. So just draw it at the end of your structure, and then you just type in what you want to call that. I'm going to call that a food vacuole because that's what it is. Okay, and then I'm going to do the same thing for all the others. So I'm just going to click on text box again. Put one here. All right, this is a water vacuole. Whoop. And put another one down here. This is the nucleus. And another one here. This is the cell membrane. Okay, so now I've got my diagram. I mean, you, you'll have a little bit more than that. Okay, so I've got my labels on there. Now, what do I need on there? Name and date, where does that go? Top right hand corner. Okay, so I'm going to quickly put that in as well. Just use another text box. And today is October 16th, 
All right. So I've got that. Now what else needs to be on there? The title. Okay. Now I'm going to put it down here. I made this a little bit too big to kind of really work very well, but it's okay. It'll still work. And an amoeba is about uh, 300. Okay. And, okay, um, I'm using U here. Okay. It'd be, it'd be nice if I can use uh, mu. And I don't think I can on special characters. I can. Okay. There it is. There's mu, okay. Oh, I got three of them. Oh. U-M, there we go. My lab drawing is now essentially done. Okay, did that take me very long? Way less time than it would have taken me to draw it, especially if I tried to draw it. And not only would it take me way longer than that, but no one would recognize it even though an amoeba has no shape as an amoeba because I'm a terrible artist, okay. just leave it how it is. All right, so now that that's all done, now I need to export it, okay, or save it in a different format. Okay, so I'm going to download it as just a JPEG, okay, just a simple file. All right, so it'll show up down below here, okay, and then you just want to put it in a folder where you can find it. It always ends up in the download folder, okay, for whatever reason. I'm going to give it a real name, like amoeba and then oh, and I'm going to take it out of there and put it somewhere where I can find it easily okay like I don't know maybe on the desktop or something all right so now I've got it there then I can insert it very easily into a google doc okay so that would be your lab report template okay tomorrow when we're doing this Okay, so I'm just going to make a blank one here so you can see what it looks like. Okay, then I'm just going to go to insert, image. Okay, it's on my desktop, so there it is. Boom, done. I got a lab drawing in my lab report. Okay, and it's not a drawing, it's an actual picture, which from at least me is a lot more meaningful than what I could have possibly drawn. Okay. Does that make sense to everybody? I, I recorded that, so I'll include that with tomorrow's lab so you can watch me do that again if you get lost or forget how I did that. Okay, but that's the way they got to be inserted into your lab report. No. Are we allowed to use the U? Uh, yeah, you can, especially since it didn't copy over here. So if you want to put U in there, that's fine. Okay, you probably you just didn't understand what mu was for whatever reason. Okay, um, but yeah, if you want to put U in there, that's fine. I'll know what you mean. Okay, any questions on how to do the lab drawing? Okay, good. 